OBS SRT stats monitor, automatic scene switcher, disconnect protection. Why the hell do you need that? Well, this just might be one of the most important videos that you'll ever watch if you're an IRL streamer, want to be an IRL streamer, and you're looking for the best solutions out there for the least amount of money and with the highest reliability. Have you ever had the situation where you were streaming outside and the connection broke and your stream died and everyone left your stream and then you came back and you realized that everyone left the stream? I think there's a stat that says that even the big IRL streamers get like 1.25 disconnects per hour. So that is something that, that happens to everyone all the time. But most big IRL streamers don't lose viewers. And why is that? Well, they typically have some kind of paid service that offers them disconnect protection, aka when they drop out, it still plays something on stream and not just the complete disconnect that loses you all the viewers. Well, in this video, we're going to go over a free solution that works with SRT, a great protocol for streaming, much better than RTMP, and that offers automatic scene switching, multiple devices, and so much more. So let's check it out. So the software is called Loopy's SRT Monitor. You're going to find the links in the description. You have to install a few things before you install this. First one is Node.js. Second one is OBS WebSockets. After you install those, you can install Loopy's SRT Monitor. All right, you download the software, install all the dependencies, and I'm ready to go. The first thing you have to do is go to the new folder created in your documents and locate a file called config.ini. All right, now that you have the config file open, let's begin with the variables that you have to change either here or in your OBS. I'll guide you through every single little detail. All right, stream fail delay. You should keep this at around 10. That is in seconds. Now, what this does is when your stream dies, the monitor waits for 10 seconds before it switches the scenes from your main camera scene to your be right back disconnection scene. Now, why you want a little buffer here, about 5 to 10 seconds, is because let's say a stream drops for 3 seconds and you have this set to 1 second before, because, I don't know, you thought that you wanted it to be as responsive as possible. You would then get a be right back screen for like a total of 2 seconds and then it will go back to your stream, which is not really what you want. You want your stream PC to just wait for a moment for your GoPro, whatever, to try to reconnect and if it cannot, then you want to switch. So that's why you want to leave it at around 5 to 10 seconds. Let's start with 10. You can change it later. X and Y window position. You don't have to touch this at all. This is only for the position of the monitor window on your screen. You won't be touching your PC anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. All right. The first very important thing that you will have to adjust. Scene OK. This is the scene, your main streaming scene your your phone or your gopro and the scene where it's being shown full screen or whatever arrangement you want this name this is the name of the scene you want it to match between this document and your obs so you can either change it here in the config to whatever name you're using in obs or you can change the obs scene name to main now let me show you my current setup this is just a test setup. Uh, I have a GoPro scene, by the way. Uh, hopefully your stream is a little bit more interesting than, than my current one. Wait, let me try to fix it. Ah, perfect. Now it's nice and uh, colorful. So the GoPro scene should be main or main should be GoPro. So we can just call this GoPro for now. And then the scene fail is the one that you use when your stream disconnects and you want to switch to that fallback to some video they recorded before to keep the audience entertained. That's the whole point of this program. So here it's called BRB and here in my OBS, it's called reconnecting BRB. So as you can see, there's a video that is being played. Now, what you want in this scene is the following. You want a local file on loop you don't have to have anything else checked so make sure that it's on loop so if you're disconnected for a long time and also 
Make sure the video is long enough. You don't want a 20 second video to be spinning in 20 times in a row while the audience is waiting. So put like a bunch of videos in there. So even if you're disconnected for a while, it's still playing something new. People don't get too used to it. This is one of my vlogs from, from my hometown. So, you know, something to keep the audience entertained while you're, you're gone trying to desperately trying to reconnect. The other two we're going to talk about later for a bit more advanced setups. All right, scene okay, done. Scene fail, which is the beat of our back scene, done. And now the next thing we want is scene intro, which is kind of optional. You can have an intro scene that this program will automatically play once it starts. But for now, you can either keep it on GoPro reconnect. It doesn't matter too much. Let's put it on GoPro. So the media sources, uh, you have your media source number one, which is your main camera. Media source number two was only needed if you're running two cameras, let's say a phone and a GoPro or some other setup. So all you need to do here, you need to go to your main camera scene and you need to match the name of the media source here and here. So just put media source GoPro. All right, your first media source is set. The second one you only use if you have it. Okay, the next one is your WebSocket address, which is always going to look like this. You just need to change the port in case you changed it yourself. So you go into Tools in OBS, WebSocket Server Settings. Make sure you have this installed. It does not work if you don't have this. Go in there, copy this port if it's different, and enter the password that you want to use over here. Let's say you want to use 123. You enter one, two, three, and you put one, two, three down here and save it. Okay, connections log. I would highly recommend you put in true because this will help you analyze your stream when you get a lot of disconnects and, and bad bandwidth. It leaves a log in your documents folder, uh, the same one, with all the info on when you got disconnected and for how long, etc. So pretty handy if you're testing the stream. So I'll leave this on true. This one is relatively similar, but it creates a text file that you could uh, possibly use in real time for monitoring. In the readme, it says that you can use it with a, an IRC script to read the file and output to a chat room, for example. So that's maybe something that could be interesting for you, but I would say leave it at false. This is a low bitrate scene. For now, I would say keep it on false. This is one of the new features and still got to decide whether this is something that you should use or not on an everyday basis. But for now, I'll leave it at false. Checked update on startup. You don't have to really. It's best that you don't. So I'll leave it at false. All right, we got the basic setup. Go and try and turn on Loopy's SRT monitor now. It's probably on your desktop. You might have an icon. Keep your camera on now. So you see the same what I see. And we have liftoff. If you don't get this, what we have right here, then you're going to get a blue screen. And on that screen, it's going to say what you did wrong. For example, if we go and change the scene name or something like that. All right, let's say scene OK GoPro 1 and try to turn it on again. See, it's going to say OBS scenes are missing. Uh, scene OK is, is the one that is the problem. So it's great. The software tells you what you have to fix. So let's say that I go and accidentally pull the Ethernet cable out of my encoder. As you can see, the stream has shut down and now the monitor is going to wait for 10 seconds. And after 10 seconds, it's going to switch to that stream fail aka reconnect brb in this case and it's going to stay here until the stream comes back but once your remote stream is back online the monitor will automatically detect that the media source is now active and it's going to switch the scene back and that's it that's the basic functionality of this software guys come on how simple was that that's it srt monitor by loopy simple as that it just runs all you have to do is set it up. It takes it three minutes max, and it's super easy. Nothing tech savvy, whatever. And if you still need some help with it, it can happen. Discord links up here. 
come visit us. There's so many people in the community that are helping out. It's amazing. I don't even have to do anything anymore. I just let them... I mean, they know better than me after all. So one more insane feature I want to talk about this free piece of software, guys, is the ability to use multiple streaming devices at the same time or even combined in one scene and have the disconnect protection work for them and also automatic scene switching as you turn them on and off. So let's say you have your GoPro and then you turn on your phone and it automatically switches to a scene that combines both your phone and your GoPro camera. Not only that, but the disconnect protection is smart in a way that it remembers what scene you were on at the time of this connection and it goes back to that scene. I think this opens up a lot of new options and opportunities for people that maybe before it they were a little bit too tedious to do if you had to do everything manually. Right now you just turn on your phone, turn the stream on and you go into split screen. How great is that? You don't have to touch anything else and it, you're so carefree while streaming which is a big deal. It really is in IRL streaming. The less things you have to do the higher quality of stream is, the less of a stress level you have. So a big plus and a big props to Alupi for making this. So in order to enable the multi-scene switching, we need to go back to the config. First thing we have to change, we need to put the correct name on the media source. Mine is called phone, as you can see in this scene. By the way, this is already streaming. Next up, we need to go to multi-camera switch and type in true. And then we have three scenes. One is for camera one, one is for camera two, and the third one is for the combination. Now you don't have to use all three, but you should definitely put them all there and put the correct names. So in our case, that'll be GoPro, phone, GoPro plus phone. So we're just gonna put those names in. Now these last two, I would recommend you keep on true. This will make sure that you go back to the correct scene after you reconnect. Otherwise, something weird might happen. Unless for some reason, you don't want to go back to the latest scene. All right, let's start the monitor and let's see what happens. So if you have both streams running, the monitor is going to recognize that you have both streams running and it's going to switch to the third scene, the combination of the two. As you can see, we have the phone stream and the GoPro right next to it. And they're both streaming at the same time right now. And this is how you can play your Pokemon Go or your chess while walking around or whatever you want. Um, I think this opens up a lot of new opportunities for uh, your IRL streaming, but I'm pretty sure you guys will come up with great creative uses. Please let me know in the comments what you would like to use this for or what you would like me to use this for in my IRL streams. Now, what happens if one of your two devices gets disconnected? Well, it's pretty simple. It would just go back to the scene of the device that is still on, which I think is the way to go about this. Um, as you can see, the monitor is now waiting to see it's counting down to 10. Once it gets to 10, it's going to switch to the one that is alive. Now, if you could disconnect the other device as well, then it's going to go to the reconnect VR back screen. Only then. That's it guys, another tutorial done. What should we do next? I recommend we do maybe GoPro. This has got so many different little quirks, issues and ways to go around certain limitations. I think that would be a fun video. Anyways, you should definitely check out the last few tutorials that I did on this whole topic if you haven't, because th that will get you up to speed on what this whole thing is. SRT streaming, RL backpack, budget backpack, uh, the whole solution. So definitely check out those videos. They'll be on the end screen and the description. And I'll see you in the next one.